We focus today on John chapter 17, verses 15 and 16. And I want to talk with you about the responsibilities that we have as Christians with reference to this world. John chapter 17, verses 15 and 16. Our Lord says, I pray not that thou shouldst take them, the disciples, out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil, or the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Few of us would want to change places with the people who are in charge of security at the White House or Buckingham Palace or wherever royalty or government officials may go. That's a tremendous responsibility, isn't it, to be guarding the the body, the, uh, the future, as it were, of some eminent, important person. And, of course, you think of the responsibility a surgeon has. I've been through surgery. Many of you have. And just think of what it means to be a surgeon standing there in that surgical arena. And uh, here is uh, someone on whom you are operating. A tremendous responsibility. I think of teachers, mothers, fathers, the tremendous responsibility of teaching and of raising children. But I think the greatest responsibility ever given is the responsibility of being a separated Christian in today's world. You see, we are taking the place of Jesus Christ in this world. Verse 18 says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. After his resurrection, our Lord said to his disciples, As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. And you and I have the tremendous responsibility of representing Jesus Christ in this world. Now you'll remember in our previous studies, we noted that our Lord uses the word world in three different senses. There's the world of creation, in verse 5, the glory which I had with thee before the world was, the world of creation, and the world of people. Verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. That is the world of humanity. God so loved the world. But the word world is also used to mean that system that is anti-Christ and anti-God and anti-Bible. Verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. The world system. And it is this world system that opposes us in our witness for Jesus Christ. Now, we have a number of responsibilities with reference to the world, and we'd better be faithful to fulfill them. First of all, we are responsible to live in the world of humanity. He says in verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. And immediately he is contradicting all of this attitude of isolation. Go off someplace and uh, get out of the world. Well, you, you, you're going to take it with you. You're going to take the same attitudes in your heart because worldliness is an attitude of the heart. Love not the world, says 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. We have the responsibility to live in the world. We are in the world physically. We are not of the world spiritually. Our Lord Jesus says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And there are three false views of our relationship that we need to be careful of. I think I've discussed these already, but I want to repeat them. One is isolation getting out of the world, getting away from the very people who need us. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are the ambassadors of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for us to isolate ourselves, go out someplace on a mountaintop or a desert, and get away from the people who need us is to violate what our Lord wants for our lives. You know, it might be a good thing if we'd realize this, that isolation is not separation. Then there is the false view of insulation, where we live in this world, but we insulate ourselves. We don't talk to anybody. We don't want to see anything. We live like an ostrich with her head buried in the sand. And, of course, that's wrong. 
I once uh, shared a Bible conference with a uh, well-known preacher, and I made the statement that if the Apostle Paul were alive today, he would read the sports page of the newspaper. Because in his letters, there are so many references to sports, athletics. And this preacher got up and really denounced me. He said that Christians don't want to read the newspaper. Christians have no right reading those things. All they should read is their Bible. Well, John Wesley used to say, I read my Bible to see what God wants to do in this world, and I read my newspaper to see what God is doing in this world, and of course, what needs to be done in this world. We shouldn't be ignoramuses. I was once on a panel at a uh, conference with a man who said it was wrong for Christians to read secular books. And he quoted Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And I replied, if you don't know what the counsel of the ungodly is, how can you avoid it? We have to be aware before we can beware. Well, he still thinks I'm liberal, I think. Insulation and isolation are not biblical positions, nor is imitation. Now, we have some of that today. We have those who say, well, we should penetrate the world. After all, we are the salt of the earth. Well, be careful that that salt doesn't lose its saltiness, lose its flavor. A lot may have thought he was going to do something to change Sodom, but the sad thing is that Sodom changed a lot. And history has shown over and over again that the one who imitates the world with an attempt to win the world ends up being won by the world. Christ is our example here. He was the friend of sinners, yet he was separate from sin. He went through the normal experiences of life. He attended wedding feasts. He played with the children. Uh, he knew what it was like to go through the normal experiences of life, but he did not get involved in sin. He was separate from sinners, and he has left us in the world because the world needs us. The world doesn't want us, and the world doesn't love us, but the world needs us. We are the salt. We are the light. We are the only life in this cemetery of the world. And, of course, the world can be used of the devil to tear us down, or our experiences in this world can be used of God to build us up. We have the responsibility to live in the world. Secondly, we have the responsibility to live unlike the world. Notice now, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil, or from the evil one, Satan, the prince of this world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Our Lord says, I am leaving you in the world, but you have the responsibility to live unlike the world. As you walk through your Bible, you discover the people that God used were separated people. Now, once again, separation is not isolation or insulation. It is, it is contact without contamination. It is being able to be the friend of sinners and the witness to sinners without imitating the sinners. When you see Abraham walking through life, you see a separated man. Now, on one occasion, he went down to Egypt and got into trouble. He lost his separation, and God rebuked him and disciplined him and brought him back. But Abraham lived unlike the world, and therefore he had a witness to the world. When that war was fought, recorded in Genesis 14, Lot was living in Sodom, and yet Abraham, outside of Sodom, came to his rescue. Lot was captured, and Abraham came to his rescue. It's the separated Christian who can rescue the worldly Christian. And then Jesus came down from heaven to tell Abraham he was going to blow Sodom and Gomorrah off the face of the earth. Abraham, living outside of Sodom, knew more about what was going on in Sodom than Lot did, and he did more about it. Abraham was able to pray for the city. Unfortunately, there weren't enough righteous people for God to spare it. Our responsibility is to live in the world, but also to live unlike the world, and this is called sanctification. We'll have more to say about that in another study. Now, how do we keep from living like the world? Verse 17 tells us, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We've already examined how the word of God enables us to live in this present evil world without being contaminated. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, said Jesus. The psalmist said, Wherewithal shall a young man, or anybody else for that matter, 
Cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. As we walk through this sordid, dirty, polluted world, the word of God guides us aright. We are pilgrims and strangers living unlike the world. Thirdly, we have the responsibility to live to win people out of the world. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. For what purpose? Verse 20 tells us that others might believe on Christ through their word. We are commissioned by Christ. We are ambassadors sent with a commission to share the truth of the gospel to a needy world. Every believer is an ambassador. Now, the ambassador is chosen by the ruler, the king or the president or whatever his title may be. We have been chosen and commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. We are his ambassadors. We preach not ourselves, said Paul, but Christ Jesus the Lord. The ambassador doesn't go around talking about himself. He represents his nation. Our citizenship is in heaven. And so we are representing the Lord Jesus Christ in this world. And we must reveal Christ to this world by what we say and by what we do and by what we don't do. When Dr. Will H. Houghton, who was president of Moody Bible Institute for a number of years, was pastor in uh, the Southland in Atlanta. When he moved into town, uh, a certain lady in that town was greatly impressed with his ministry, and her husband was an unbeliever. Her husband hired a private detective to follow Will H. Houghton around, and the detective reported after some days that man lives what he preaches, and as a result, that husband was saved. I wonder what would happen if unsaved people followed us around, hired a detective to watch us. Would we influence anybody to know the Lord Jesus as Savior? They came to Spurgeon one day, the British Baptist preacher, and said, we'd like to write your life story. And Mr. Spurgeon said, you may write my life in the clouds. I have nothing to hide. And that's a good thing to be able to say, isn't it? We have the responsibility of living in the world. We have the responsibility of living unlike the world. We have the responsibility of living to win people out of the world. And finally, we have the responsibility of living with the expectation of leaving this world. In verse 22, I've given them the glory. Verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. That's heaven that they may behold my glory. One of these days we are going to leave this world. When I was a young Christian attending a little neighborhood church in northern Indiana, I sang in the choir. I don't think I'd have the courage to do that now. But one of the songs that we used to sing often for Sunday evenings was, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. We are strangers and pilgrims in this world, and we are living with the expectation of leaving this world. We're going to go to glory. We're going to be with Jesus Christ. And that's what keeps us going. When the going is tough, we do like Abraham. By faith, we see that heavenly city. When the going is tough, we do like Moses. Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses and Abraham and the great men and women of faith kept their eyes upon the glory, upon heaven. And that's what kept them going. And that's what's going to keep us going. It's not easy to live in this world because the world hates us. Even our own flesh and blood who don't know Jesus as Savior hate us and are opposed to us. But we must live unlike the world. We've got to be salt in the midst of a lot of leaven. We have to be light in the midst of darkness, life in the midst of death, truth in the midst of error love in the midst of hate. We should live to win people out of the world. What a privilege that is. And we should live with the expectation of leaving this world. Now, is this the way you and I are living? Oh, I hope so. I trust that our Lord's prayer is being answered, that we're allowing God the Father to keep us from the evil one, keep us sanctified, pure, separated, that we might reach others with the gospel.